As you can imagine, people still talking about the accusations against Jimmy Savile. The news this morning is that the headstone was removed in the middle of the night. Now, Kelly Hickley says, I watched snippets of the program which has brought this situation to light and I'm shocked that some of those he worked with said they saw him with young girls. She says, shame on them for not speaking out and protecting others. Still to come in his first sit-down interview since allegations of groping a 14-year-old were made against him. Freddie Starr hopes to set the record straight, accompanied by the fiancé who loves and stands by him. That first, though, yesterday we spoke to the fiancé of Freddie Starr following allegations he groped a 14-year-old girl on a Jimmy Savile show. Well, today Freddie's here alongside fiancé Sophie Lee to answer the accusations made against him. So we know that overnight the headstone, Jimmy Savile's headstone, has been removed from yeah. the, the cemetery. Four thousand pounds worth of uh, and they did it under cover of darkness, didn't they? Rather than in daylight, I think they just wanted to get it out of the way. And the family saying that that is uh, out of respect for people who may visit the uh, the graves of, of their relatives, uh, loved ones. Um, I wonder also whether or not there was concern that it was probably going to get vandalised in some way. Absolutely. It's going to be the focus of people, people's anger, aren't, isn't it? Mm. If they know it was so ostentatious, wasn't it? Did you see it? Mm. It was huge, gold writing at on it. At the time, you see, I remember when it went up at the time, and it was fun, it was him. Mm. You know, yeah. oh, he was ostentatious, he was outrageous. Larger than life. Larger than life. He was, the plot that he was in looked out so that he had a good view, and all of those things that we all thought, oh, that's Jimmy Savile. Yeah. Now, of course, the whole thing is yeah. just tainted. It's Everything looks different with hindsight, doesn't it? Mm. We actually had his official biographer on our show yesterday morning spent six years with him yeah mm. we said didn't you you know realize anything was going on not at all except yeah he had a bit of a rant didn't he a very uh, peculiar uh, what was he doing defending gary glitter's actions completely yeah. out of the blue a bit, a bit had a big odd. rant about that but apart from that he had no sort of inclination that he'd done anything what wrong done. well what, what you have here now i mean looking at the <clears throat> front of these newspapers um the savile files um Soap star and a DJ are among five celebs named, it says here. Unmask the other BBC child abusers. Uh, you would mm. hope that, yes, it's vital that, that people who m may be guilty are found out, yep. discovered, and that someone pays for this. But also that you don't want a witch hunt. Um, and that there could be, there could very well be, you've got to be very careful, you don't end up naming people that in actual fact yeah. are not involved who in were, Who were once associated with him, for, you know, just because if you're you seen in the same shot this, as the someone. stigma will stay with you for the rest yeah. of your life, regardless of whether you were proven innocent or guilty. And I think people could be lulled into a false sense of security. The fact that Jimmy Savile is dead means that we can't libel him. We can say these things and, that, you know, they've been borne out by what the police have said. People who are still alive, you can't bandy around accusations that might harm their reputation. So people need to be careful who they're pointing the finger at. You just wish Jimmy Savile was alive, don't you, so he could be able well, to you answer just, them. You wonder whether, wish. because he's dead, is the reason it's come out. That's the thing, isn't it? They mm. didn't come out when he was alive. Mm. Well, it, I mean, uh, uh, as oh God, we've been covering the story now, uh, ever since it broke, we yeah, all yeah. have. Yeah. Um, and, and at last, of course, these women can, can yeah. name their, their, uh, their abuser. Yeah. It's very important that he is abused, and the police have, uh, that he is named as an abuser, and the police have uh, have, have said that he is such. Yeah. Um, but but I do believe that there has to be caution when you name yeah. people in, in this scandal. Of course. The, the thing that really disturbed me, just, I mean, the whole thing is disturbing, but the fact that he may have roamed around hospital wards, mm. you know, he was so closely associated, associated with Stoke Mandeville Hospital, you just, you know, what was going on? You know, yeah, we do horrible. need to find it's out what was so going horrible. on. Yeah. Welcome back. It's a story that's dominated the headlines for a fortnight. And last weekend, comedian Freddie Starr was caught up in the Jimmy Savile scandal when he was accused of groping a then 14-year-old girl onto Jimmy's Clunk Click program. Well, Freddie denied ever having been on the 1974 children's show. However, after footage of Freddie appearing on the program surfaced and showed him seated near to his accuser, Karen Ward, uh, he has since denied any wrongdoing. Today, Freddie is here with his fiancée, Sophie Lee. Um, Thank you for coming in today, Freddie. Um, these allegations, when was the first time you heard of them? When my lawyer phoned me up and um, said um, what you just said about, you know, the Jimmy Savile thing. Yeah. And they asked me, did I know Jimmy Savile? And I said, no. Have you ever done a show? I said, well, I can't recall it. These are, they're very serious allegations they are and indeed. you then were advised to take out an injunction why did you do that uh, my lawyer advised me just to give us breathing space 
to collect our thoughts and all the evidence, what we went through. Yeah. And he even asked me, did you do a show with Jimmy Savile? I said, Dean, I don't know. I really don't know. Well, it turned out that you did do yes, a I, show with Jimmy Savile. Yes, obviously I did, because um, there's a photograph there, and there, there she's standing behind my back. Well, if you would have widened that photograph out, mm. right? Yeah. There was about another 200 people in there besides her. I think that at the time, many people thought, well, how convenient that you, you, you say that you've met him twice before, but the one time you hadn't recalled yeah. Well, that just slipped my mind. That, that just slipped my mind, Phil. You know, I, I've done hundreds and thousands of shows on television, uh, and, you know, on the road, I'm, I'm on tour at the moment, and we're, we're up and down the country. I mean, I've been doing it for 50 years. After 40 years, to ask me a question like that, mm. have you ever done a show with Jimmy Savile? I said, well, I can't recall doing it. Well, it's much more serious than just recalling that one specific show, because then, then there are the accusations well, there is. of Karen Ward. Yes, and the, but this... I'm not allowed to mention Karen Ward. Well, we can show you what she said, and you can reply to it. This is what she said. I was horribly, horribly humiliated by Freddie Starr, who had a very bad attack of wandering hands and had groped me and I didn't like him because he smelled like my stepfather and it, it frightened me and freaked me out and, and I rebuffed him and he humiliated me in front of everyone in the dressing room. She went on to say that you'd humiliated her because of uh, some comment about her small breasts. No. Mm -hmm. I think the facts of the matter are is this story's been changed so many times through the press. At first of all, apparently, Freddie was in the same dressing room as Jimmy Savile and Gary Glitter. And then later, on another interview, her statement changed. And like yesterday I said, it said, let me clarify, the event with Freddie Starr was on a different occasion of seeing Gary Glitter having sex. And she said that Freddie's reaction, or Freddie's statement, was an overreaction. Freddie, had you ever been in Jimmy Savile's dressing room? No, never in a million years. You no. never went back in that room after, no. after recording No, I never allowed people in my dressing room. When you were doing that show, were you aware of any inappropriate behaviour that could have been going on? No. It was like the Leveson inquiry. None of us knew what the press were doing, what Murdoch was doing, you know, you know, to get a story. We're, well, we're not really talking about the press. What we're talking about is the is that yeah, occasion press, in that studio. It's the press that keep it going and keep it dripping. I think you, I think what it is, it's the women who uh, who were abused, who uh, who I thankfully think, have now come honest, forward. Well, I do that, feel yeah. sorry for anyone that's been abused. Of course, I do. Mm. You know, but when somebody comes out, there's about five. I, I, sorry, I can't say it. Can you, let's let's let's, let's let's put all that aside. And let's just talk about you at that time. Yeah. So, this is, you're not gagged there. You can... What, right, what I did not person... touch... I, I, I know from my own personal, my own self-being, that I would never, ever, ever touch an underage girl. Do you believe ever. you could have ever been involved with a girl whose age you were unsure of? No. No. Because girls can occasionally look older than they Listen, are. Listen, when I, when I was in, in, in the 1974s, I was getting my shirt ripped off my back by girls. You know, getting jumped all over by them. But I kept away from them. I always kept away because I, I knew that spelled trouble. So at no point in that, in, where we're talking about these 60s, 70s, early 80s, at no point do you feel there is anyone else who could come forward and say you were I guilty have, of inappropriate behaviour? I have never, ever groped a woman in my life. In my life. What do you think of these accusations um, and the revelations now of Jimmy Savile? What do I think about it? I, I think he's abused his position. Way out, way out, you know, despicable. There's no words to say about that. What, you know, what that man's done and the way he conducted himself. That is disgusting. Many people are saying that it was one of those things that was, although unacceptable and illegal, was brushed under the carpet, was ignored in the 60s, I knew nothing stages. about that. Did you ever see anything I, in your career that you would believe to be in the BBC? 
of inappropriate behaviour? I never saw nothing. At the top of the pops once, I was on the stage for three minutes. I had another job to go and do. It was a nightclub. I shot straight off the, with my um, with my manager Tony Cartwright, and and we both went away. Mm. We never stayed behind. I, I don't even allow people in my dressing room now. I've never allowed people in my dressing room. Um, you welcome an investigation, don't I you? I welcome a police investigation. I want to be questioned by the police. I want it badly, mm -hmm. you know, to be questioned by it. I mean, what was it like, you know, when I met you? Freddie's never, ever, and like I was saying to you yesterday morning, for, Freddie and I were friends for a long time before we ever got together. I was at a very vulnerable point in my life where he never, never ever took advantage of me. Mm. He was there totally as a friend and he's always been a gentleman 100%. I don't uh, think that this should ever have come out through the media, to be honest. This is why the injunction was taken in place in the first place. She should have gone to the police and, uh, and, uh, and complained. The lady should have gone there and complained. Not to the press, but to the media. Have you been contacted by the police? No. Not at all. We want the police to get involved. We've got private investigators working on this. Because we know, and those that know Freddie, know that this is untrue. But it is actually very important the police contact you and contact you quickly. Because, yeah. the, because in your eyes, these are false accusations. They are false. The, uh, yes. You know, and uh, it felt, it, I want to tell you, it, to be accused of something that you know in your heart of hearts, oh, I slipped up on one show. You said that you never uh, did a job with um, James Hunt. Oh, yes, absolutely. And later on, you found out that there was a clip of you with James Hunt, and you said, God, I didn't know I did that. Mm. That's exactly what happened to me, because I've done that many shows, you do forget. Mm. I think and the sad thing is, though, as well, is we live in Great Britain, and in Great Britain, you're innocent until proven guilty. There's been no police investigation into this. We have had no contact with the police. And we want the police to get involved and get to the bottom of this. And we want to clear Freddie's name. It shouldn't be all over the press. And you get people saying, oh, he's got a younger partner. It must be true. But it doesn't mean anything regardless of our age difference. We were consenting adults when we met one another. And it should make no difference that Freddie's with a younger fiance or there's any, any age difference, does not mean that these allegations have any truth behind them whatsoever. There were reports that it had implications on your health. Have, uh, has it made you poorly? Yeah. I've got to go to the hospital um, later on today to get a check-up on my heart because I've been getting palpitations with it. You know, it's, um, you know, stress goes right to the heart, you know, and it's like... Well, thank you for coming in today. Um, and uh, it'll be important, I, I suppose, and very interesting to see whether or not you are mm. contacted um, by the police. But if I do have a heart attack and die on my gravestone, it'll be, I told you, I was innocent. Thank you, Freddie. Cheers. Thank you. Right, let's get an update um, from the Hub now with Jeff. Yes, plenty of comments about Freddie Starr's interview. Uh, Zoe Tootill says people should listen to what Freddie has to say before judging him. Uh, Rihanna says Freddie Starr's 34-year-old fiancé saying he never molested anybody. With respect, how does she know? She can't truly know. Um, Anonymous has left, I met Freddie Starr once at one of his shows. He pulled me up on stage and I sang with him. Found him to be very charismatic. He put his arm around me and I felt very comfortable in his presence. I feel these allegations are unfair, especially after so many years. 